Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and today we're doing a little bit of hacking with the Rigol DHO 804 oscilloscope. What I plan to do is a memory and bandwidth upgrade option which has been documented by the people on the EV blog forums and thanks to them there is a pretty simple way to get this done. So out of the box these things do have a memory depth limit of 25 meg points but we can increase that up to 50 and we can take the bandwidth from 70 megahertz up to 100, but uh, people on the forum have reported even higher than that. So uh, I don't really have an accurate way to measure the bandwidth anyway, but uh, seeing as this is basically a free upgrade, let's do it anyway. Now, of course, you could brick your device doing this. You could void your warranty. Uh, Rigol could release an update that stops this from working. Who knows? But uh, so far, nobody has reported any issues. But uh, again, you're on your own if you choose to do this. Uh, obviously, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, but they never said anything about not hacking it. So let's get started. A couple of prerequisites are that we're on firmware version 1.01 or higher, and you should be able to also confirm that in the options list because you'll see storage depth option is limited. I was on version 1.00, and instead of the storage depth option, it's actually got the bandwidth upgrade option. So uh, the bandwidth upgrade will work if you're on version 1.00, but you won't be able to apply the storage depth upgrade. The 1.01 firmware can be found on the Rigol North America website, so you just need to download that and stick the update.gel file on a USB stick. And once you've got the update file on the USB stick, you just plug it into the front of the scope, head into the menu, and it may be tempting to hit upgrade, but for whatever reason, it just says no firmware available. What you need to do is head into the storage menu, go to upgrade over here, and then select the file path. So we just need to go to a removable disk, and there is our DHO update.gel file. Now, even though most people are probably already on version 1.01, .01, I mention all this because if we ever need to restore a backup file, this is how you do it. And we're gonna be creating a backup file in just a moment. So I'm gonna plug back in my USB Wi-Fi dongle. And if you wanna know a really cheap way to add Wi-Fi to one of these things, I did a video on that just recently. So I'll link that up there. And uh, you can also play Doom on this thing if you really wanted to but we do need a network connection. So you will either have to have Wi-Fi connected or you'll need a wired ethernet connection to your local network. And thanks to 16-bit uh, Surge over on the EV blog forums, there is a pretty simple way to do this. So first thing we need to do is install the Golang distribution. So I'm just gonna search Google for that. So I'll just download the most recent version for Windows because that's what I'm running. And we just need to install this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take note of the path that it's gonna go in. So in my case, it's program files slash go, because we will need to input that path into the update script that we get from the EV blog forums. All right, that's all done. So the next thing we need to do is download this little zip file. I'll have links to all of this stuff in the video description. Obviously, you probably wanna check the uh, EV blog forums to see if anything's changed since I've filmed this video, but um, for now, this is pretty much the easiest way to do it. There are a couple of other ways that people have tried with uh, actually pushing the 900 series files onto the 800 series, but that has resulted in some weird DC offsets and also poor DC accuracy. So um, there may be a way to get the 900 files working on the 800 series, but at the moment it's still pretty buggy. And so far nobody has reported any issues doing it the upgrade way, which is what we're gonna show today. So once we've got our zip file from the EV blog forums, I'm just gonna extract all this into a folder. And there is a readme file in here, so you probably wanna have a quick read through that. Uh, there are some other options that this script can do, but today I'm just gonna be showing the basic upgrade option. So before we begin, we just need to edit our batch file and oh yeah, shut up Windows. And we just need to point it to the path of the Go installation, which is what we had before. So in my case, it was C drive program files go slash bin. You do need to keep that bin directory there. And we also need to set our scope IP address. So you do need this connected to your network. And in my case, the IP address is currently 192.168.1.147. I'm just gonna copy that, paste it in here so I don't stuff anything up. And added a couple of spaces, there we go. Uh, you don't really need to worry about any of these other options unless you know what you're doing. Again, look at the readme file. So we'll save this, close that, 
And then all we need to do is just run this batch file. It should connect to our scope and it'll automatically start making a backup file, which is in the form of another gel file. So that's why I mentioned the uh, firmware update process before, because this is basically the same thing if you wanted to restore that backup. So I think this will take a minute or two, so sit tight. And once that's done, it'll automatically open up a new browser tab and it wants us to send an SCPI command. So if we head back to the batch file, you can see that it tells us to send uh, the generated commands via the SCPI interface, which are located in a new text file. So if we head back into our folder, we can see that we've got a new file here called SCPI commands, and we've also got a key.data and a backup file. So I'd recommend just throwing these two into a zip file just to keep them on hand should anything ever happen in the future. So I'm just gonna call this DHO804 unmodded backup. And you probably should copy that into like a cloud storage or something like that. We're going to jump into this generated text file and all we need to do is copy these two commands here one by one, just making sure we grab the entire line. Go back to our browser window, get rid of that and paste that command in there and then just hit send and read. And on the scope, it just popped up with options activated successfully. So that was one of them. Let's just go back to that text file and copy over the other one. And of course, delete all this that we stuck in here, make sure that's all gone and paste that one in, send and read, options activated successfully. So that should be our upgrade done. We can head back to that little batch file and if we hit any key, you'll notice that there is a bw7t10.license file and an rlu license file now detected. So that's both our bandwidth upgrade and our memory depth upgrade. And if we head back to the scope interface, if we look down in our utility menu, uh, we can now see storage depth option is now marked as forever. And if we go to about, we can see that we've got max bandwidth of 100 megahertz. So that is our options installed. You don't even need to reboot this thing to take advantage of those. Let's just have a look up here. And yes, we can now change our memory depth to 50 meg points. Uh, obviously turning on more channels will lower that. So with two channels, we now have a max of 25. And with three or four channels, we now have a max of 10. I think without the upgrade, it's 25 for one channel, uh, 10 for two, and then one for three or four channels. So that's a pretty decent upgrade, I'd say. And I guess that is it for the oscilloscope stuff for now. So um, like I said, I don't really have an accurate way to test these upgrades, but uh, even with slower speed signals, it should still make a difference. Um, so yeah, I'll put the scope away for now. Uh, coming up next week or right now for patrons, we're gonna be looking at a Game Boy screen upgrade. And then I think, well, it may be time for some December stuff. So um, if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, definitely check out the Patreon links below. You'll get ad-free early access to all videos. Uh, like I said, the Game Boy video is already up on there and coming up soon, yeah, there's some December things in the works. So um, thank you all for watching. A huge thanks to the people on the EV blog forums for documenting all this stuff. And a massive thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. And um, yeah, thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, all that YouTube bullshit shit. I will hopefully catch you in the next one. Bye. Nice. And once you've done that, you just plug the USB. Oh, fuck off.